Hey guys, it's Fia, and today I wanted to do a tutorial on getting started in VirtualCast, which is the program that I use for filming the virtual reality show. VirtualCast is a free game on Steam designed specifically for VTubers. There's not a lot of information on it because it is still in its beta form and it is a Japanese program, but luckily there is an English version. Yay! <laughs> Unfortunately, however, I encountered a lack of tutorials when I was trying to learn this program, so I thought why not help everyone out who's been asking me about how I use Virtual Cast to film my videos. First thing you want to do is make an account with The Seed Online. The Seed connects to lots of different VRM apps like VDraw and CustomCast, working as an online hub for all of your VRM models and props. It's definitely worth checking out the other apps, but some of them are region locked due to being in Japan. Also, make sure you have the auto translate feature set on Google. That way, you can make your account. Alright, so now that I've loaded up Virtual Cast, you can take a look around and see inside the menu screen. Yay! So I'm going to go ahead and press the menu button, and you'll see that I have the option of quick starting the game, which I already have set up as via Bunny, or you can go to the desktop to personalize settings. So we are going to take a look at those desktop settings. All right, so here's the main menu screen. You'll wanna get pretty familiar with the screen if you plan on actually using Virtual Cast for streaming or video making. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and log into your Seed Online account that you made earlier. Um, right here is where you're going to be able to see all of your items that you have linked to your account. As you can see, you could have only up to 30 imports and 30 submissions, so you do have to be mindful about how much stuff you're throwing in here. So now you can see that there's some linking options for Nico Nico and for Showroom. Neither of these I'm going to get into right now because they are Japanese programs, so most English speakers are not even going to have those as an opportunity of something that you can use. Over here in the other platforms tab, you have streaming options for YouTube and Twitch, but I've personally found it easier to just use OBS since that is a little more streamer friendly. Hiding over here and to the left, you can see the settings options. So there's a bunch of different settings here that you can set up. Um, I'm not going to go into all of these today for the time being, but know that you can do your output resolution, link your Twitter, add VCI links, and stuff like that, which I will be making the specific videos for in the future. So going back here to the main screen, you can also see a little microphone here. You can turn your talk back on and it'll test your headset mic. I will say you probably most likely do want to leave this connected to your headset and not using an external mic because the mouth tracking is audio based in this game. And so if your microphone is too far away, it's not going to look as accurate to what you're actually saying. All right, so heading back to the quick start tab here, you can go ahead and choose your nickname. I have obviously chosen Fia Bunny, which will display in game. Your target studio ID, you can just leave blank for right now. Um, you will have a randomly generated one once you open up your instance, and that will be identifiable to only your instance. So then we can go ahead and press the start button or press the quick start button in game if you've already configured this all up. Um, a previous time so you don't have to do it all again. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so now that we've loaded into the game here, we can go ahead and calibrate. So I'm gonna press my trigger buttons and go ahead and get that started. I will say that it sometimes takes a while for things to load in, especially the VRM models. So do be patient with that and be careful not to move around too much because sometimes you'll load in a little funny, especially if your head's tilted upwards or whatnot. So now that we're in game, you can see I have this giant screen over here and a nice falling name tag with my nickname that I chose earlier. It's me, Fia Bunny. <laughs> so on that screen, if you peek your um, headset up, you can see that it's actually being output to your computer monitor. So you can get a little closer and see how things are there. If I look at both of my hands, you can see I have different gesture options, which is super cute. And on the right hand, you can um, go ahead and use the joystick to do different um, expressions. So I've got different faces I can make. And if you press down on it, you can do a nice little slight smile. So some fun things to play around with. Um, you have this entire space pretty much to yourself. Uh, you can have other people come in, which I'll do a video on how to do the multiplayer very, very soon. Uh, the first thing I will show off here is if you go to your items, you have some different camera options. So there's a whole bunch of different things you can do, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up a camcorder, nice and basic, and you can see it spawns in right here in front of me, woohoo! 
So if I twist this little, little guy around here and I trigger the button, then I have this camera pop up. So I can do something fun like a selfie style video or just do like a straight on um, video just however I want my body position. And you'll see that this camera is actually outputting to the computer now instead of that giant screen over there. And if I trigger it again, it'll switch back. So you can switch between different cameras super duper easily that way. And there's a switching camera. So then actually, if I go ahead and grab this guy and I press the B button, I can change the visibility. So if I turn the visibility off, make invisible, and then touch him again here, you can see he no longer shows up in the video. So like I showed before, you can press B and delete items that way. Otherwise, you can press this tidy up option and it'll just clear out all the items you have inside of your studio at once, which is super duper helpful. Um, You have your custom items with, as well, which is everything that's linked to your Seed Online account and most likely things that you've imported from other people. But you can, if you know how the 3D model, then you can definitely make stuff yourself to put into your worlds here. Um, you have your character change. So I have my different FIA models uploaded and obviously I have different outfits that I use for different episodes of the virtual reality show. But you also have all of these built-in ones. Um, there's a bunch of fun different options and they're not all anime themed, but it's definitely worth checking those out. Um, changing your background, there's a whole bunch of different options. These two are ones that I downloaded and uploaded from the seed, but then you also have these default ones. Then if I scroll all the way down here, you can see I also have a chroma key studio, which is super great if you're trying to make green screen type content. Then coming back here, you can see the cast option that just shows all the users in the room. Then you have your rooms function. So if I click other rooms here, this is where I can go ahead and join. Um, other studios besides my own. Sometimes there'll be other users hanging out in there and you can go and talk to them. So the last thing we're gonna take a look at is going to be the system settings over here. You have your tweet option. So if you link your Twitter account, you can upload photos you take into virtual cast directly to Twitter. Studio settings, you can choose to do 3D audio, which will change the gain depending on how close or how far away you are from the microphone. Personally, I think the default settings are more practical there. Reload VRM in case your model gets stuck and you want to reload it. Uh, locomotion, there's some settings that you can mess around with there. Motion filter, so this is what the motion filter looks like on. It makes things really natural, but if you turn it off, it's going to be more direct and accurate to what you're actually moving. But I definitely think leaving that on is the better option here. Uh, comment, so that's not really necessary because those would be the settings for comments if you... um had your account linked up to Nico Nico, but obviously we can't do that as English speakers. Uh, volume settings, pretty self-explanatory. Quit options. So I will point out that there is a back to title option, which is really great in case you load into the game and realize something like, oh no, I didn't have my output resolution set to the right, um, like 1080p or something. So then you can just reload it without restarting the entire game all over again. All right, well, that's everything that I wanted to show you guys inside of Virtual Cast, so I will see you in just a second. All right, well, that's it for this getting started tutorial. I'm sorry we didn't get an actual episode of the Virtual Reality Show out this week, but I've been getting tons of requests about how I made the FIA model and how I filmed the Virtual Reality Show. So look forward to more tutorials very soon, as I'm planning to have another one or two out as soon as possible. Thanks again, everybody, for your support. We just hit 300 subscribers, which is super duper exciting. If you want to talk more about Virtual Cast or any other topics related to virtual reality, then feel free to join my Discord link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, then please, please, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the Virtual Reality channel. If you want to help support the Virtual Reality Show anymore, then please consider donating or subscribing to my Patreon so that I can afford things like full body tracking to help make the show better. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!